It is November 16, 1974. The radio telescope in Arecibo is being prepared for an unprecedented experiment. For the first time in the history of mankind, a scientist, the radio astronomer Frank Drake, transmits a three-minute digital radio message from here into space. A cosmic contact attempt to an extraterrestrial civilization. This was preceded by deliberations about how the digitally encrypted message should be designed and what kind of information should be transmitted. Drake developed a graphic digital code. The universal language of mathematics formed the basis of it. That, that message was remarkable for several reasons. One, of course, it was the first to deliberately try and reach the aliens. The second thing was that it used the transmitter on the Arecibo telescope. It had a big radar transmitter. It wasn't designed to signal aliens, of course. That transmitter was there to uh, allow the telescope to do science on the Earth's upper atmosphere, actually. But in any case, it was a very powerful uh, transmitter, several million watts. And con when you connect that up with a very big antenna, because the antenna was 300 meters across, uh, then indeed you could make a very, very powerful signal. So he used this setup to send signals to a couple of nearby star systems, mostly as a demonstration, honestly. The only problem with that experiment <laughs> was that that star cluster that he broadcast to is about 25,000 light years away. So it will take 25,000 years for this broadcast to reach them. And uh, you know, if somebody decides to answer, uh, that'll take another 25,000 years. Well, obviously that won't interest me or Frank or, or anybody living on earth today, but it, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a demonstration of what you can do. But today, the city hype of the 1970s and 80s has long since died down. Well, if you ask how many people are doing SETI and actually doing the experiment, which is to say they're trying to pick up a signal, in the entire world, there might be maybe 10 people, something like that, 10, 20. It's very, very small. Uh, part of that is it has to do with the money, but, but it's very small. Uh, I think the other thing about it is that you cannot guarantee success. You can't tell a student, for example, you should work on SETI and try and find the aliens. The problem is they might spend four years doing that and not find anything. The 50th anniversary of the Arecibo message is just around the corner. The Art Meets Science, Foundation Herbert W. Franke, is celebrating with a special artwork. It is commissioned by a work from the world-famous AI artist Sasha Stiles. You must choose one or the other, life or death. There is no third way. You can't have both. You must make a decision. Life is beautiful, but it will end. Death is ugly, but will last forever. She will now create a poetic message to the world out there 50 years later. The premiere will take place at a special performance at the Bochum Planetarium in Germany. In addition to this commissioned work, the Foundation has announced a worldwide open call for the community of generative artists. The work submitted will also be presented for first time to the public at this event. Will humans soon be able to make contact with alien intelligences via radio signals? Seth is convinced that it will happen and is relying on passive search methods. But we don't know where the aliens are. We assume they're out there. The universe is very big and a lot of planets. And uh, so, you know, I mean, we don't know how far away they might be. Even the nearest aliens might be, say, 100 light years away. That's a fairly short distance in astronomy. Well, let's say they're 100 light years away. So you send a message, hi, uh, we're the Earthlings and we just love to talk to you. And it takes 100 years for that signal to get to them. And if they reply, that takes another hundred years. So by that point, you're dead. The funding is run out and, you know, the whole experiment doesn't seem very interesting anymore. 
So we don't do that. We listen. We simply turn on our receivers and try and pick up a signal that's clearly made by a transmitter. We'll build more radio antennas, so we'll do more radio telescopes. We'll build better receivers. That's just digital electronics. And I'm talking to you from the Silicon Valley. So, you know, all around here, there are people working on digital electronics. Uh, and also to look for flashing lasers. That's another approach to SETI. So all these things we have been doing, but they will be done better. They will be done faster. And that means we will have looked at a larger fraction of the universe that's near us. So it's, it's exploration. And if you have the ability to explore a wider bit of the earth, you might have a greater chance of success. So what are the SETI researchers' expectations for the next 10 years? I do think that if you look at the improvements in technology, which are the things you can predict, uh, it's, to my mind, very likely that we will find a signal in the next, say, 10, 12 years. And I bet everybody a cup of coffee that that will happen. I don't bet them anything more than a cup of coffee, but I will bet anybody a cup of coffee that will find ET within, say, a dozen years. And uh, that'll just be a big story. I mean, you can imagine what the headlines on the newspapers will look like. Will his dream really come true?